Now that we've established these four types of patterns, we can use them to determine what kind of function we're working with if we're given a table of function values. So here's an example. We have a table of values and we want to identify the pattern and the kind of function that has this pattern. So the four patterns that we have been that we have established are add 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 multiply 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 And finally, the constant second difference. See if you can remember which function applies to which pattern. All right, add add is a linear function. Add multiply is exponential. Multiply, multiply is a power function. And finally, the constant second difference is a quadratic. So let's see if we can determine if any of these patterns apply to this table of function values. First of all, if it's add, add, then we would determine how much are we adding to x to get our next value in the table. So here, it's pretty obvious, we are adding 1. Now we'll see if we can determine a consistent y pattern through addition. To get from 5 to 7, we add 2. Uh, to get from 7 to 11, we'd add 4. So we're not adding the same value for y when we add the same value for x. Therefore, add, add, and linear don't apply to this example. Let's try another pattern. Add, multiply. Okay, well, actually, I could have left the ones over here on the left. Now, to get from 5 to 7, I would have to multiply by 7 over 5. If I multiply 5 by 7 over 5, I get 7. To get from 7 to 11, I would have to multiply by 11 over 7. We can see right there that there is no consistent pattern of multiplication to get from one y value to the next if we're looking at an addition pattern for my x values. So that eliminates the add multiply or exponential opportunity. So let's look at multiply, multiply. If I try to establish a multiplication pattern for my x's, let's see. If I multiply 4 by 2, I would end up at 8. But if I multiply 5 by 2, I end up at 10. And 10 isn't a value in our table of values. So we can't actually test for the multiply, multiply, or power function. In this case, there's just not enough data, or not the right data, to test for multiply, multiply. So by process of elimination, it should be the constant second difference, if this applies to any of the four functions that we looked at. But let's test just to make sure. So we do have that regular consistent change in x on this side. I change from 5 to 7 by adding 2, 7 to 11 by adding 4, 11 to 17 by adding 6, and 17 to 25 by adding 8. Now my second difference, I got from 2 to 4 by adding 2, 4 to 6 by adding 2, and 6 to 8 by adding 2. I do have a constant second difference. So that constant second difference tells me I'm working with a quadratic function. Here's another way we can apply the information that we've gained by establishing these patterns. 
if I'm given two data points and I know what type of function I'm working with, I can predict or establish new data points. For instance, if I have these points f of 5 equals 12 and f of 10 equals 18, so I have the two points 5, 12, and 10, 18. for x and y, and I know that I'm working with a linear function, then I know that my data points will have an add-add pattern. So I just need to determine the specific add-add pattern that applies to these data points. Well, I can see that when I add 5 here, then I add 6 here. Now, if I continue to apply that pattern, I can establish new data points. So if I add another 5, I'll end up at 15. And over here, I would add 6, so I would end up at 24. If I repeat that process and add 5 again, I end up at 20. And if I add 6, I'll end up at 30. So if f is a linear function, f of 20 is 30. Let's take a look at if f is a power function. Well, in that case, my two points, 5, 12, and 10, 18, need to fall within a multiply, multiply pattern. So I ask myself, what did I have to multiply 5 by to get to my next value, 10? So that was times 2. What do I need to multiply 12 by to get to my value, 18? So times 18 over 12, which is equal to 3 halves. If I continue my pattern here, I go from 10 to 20 by multiplying by 2. So my next value for y, I would have to multiply by the same value I did before, or 3 halves. And 3 halves of 18 is 27. So f of 20 for a power function will be 27. Finally, let's take a look at the exponential situation. So we set up our table again, 5, 12, and 10, 18 for my x's and y's. And now I use the exponential pattern, which is add, multiply. So here I'm adding 5. And here I'm multiplying by 3 halves. So if I add 5 again, I at, at 15. And if I multiply by 3 halves, I end up with 27. Now I need to add 5 again to get 20, and I, and I need to multiply 27 by 3 halves. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, half of 27 is 13 and a half. So if I add 13 and a half to 27, I get 40.5. So if those data points are part of an exponential function, f of 20 will be 40.5. Notice I didn't have to, in any of these cases, determine what the actual function was. I simply knew that the pattern would appear for that type of function, and I could apply it to the information I already had. Let's look at another example where we can describe the effect on our y values if we make specific changes to x when our relationships between x and y are either direct or indirect variations. So if we take an equation and we know 
that in that equation y varies directly as x, then our equation looks like y equals kx. So if I start with particular values for y and x, y1 would equal k times some certain value of x. And I want to know what's going to happen to my y values if I double my x value. So if I replace x1 with twice that amount, 2x1, I'll get a new value for y. And I want to know how that new value for y compares to my original value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my new expression and divide it by my original expression. y1 equals k times x1. And I can see that if I simplify these two ratios, y2 compared to y1 is 2. So y2 is twice as large as my original y value when I double my x value. Let's look at another situation. What happens to my y values if the relationship is an inverse relationship? So I'm going to erase this information here. There it goes. And my new relationship would be my original y value is directly or indirectly related to my x value. So y1 equals k over x1. Now, to get my new y value, I'm going to double x. So k over 2x1. If I take my new equation and divide it by my original equation to see how they compare, and simplify, then y2 over y1 becomes 1 over 2. Because when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So x1 over k, things cancel out, and I'm left with 1 half. So with an inverse relationship, when I double my x value, my y value becomes half of my original y value. Let's look at the third possibility. What happens when y varies directly with the cube of x? So my relationship, y1 equals k times x1 cubed. Now I'm going to replace my x value with 2x so and determine what my new y value would be. k times the quantity 2x1 cubed. If I simplify that or get rid of those parentheses, then y2 is going to be k times 8x1 cubed. If I compare that to my original relationship, y1 equals k x1 cubed, and I want to see how they compare, I divide. So my k's cancel out, my x cubes cancel out, and I'm left with 8, which means that when I double my x value in a directly cubic relationship, my new y value will be 8 times my original y value. So a quick recap there. For direct variation, doubling y, doubling x results in a doubling of y. For an inverse variation, doubling x results in halving my y values. And for the direct cubic variation, 
doubling x increases y by a factor of 8. Let's take that process one step further. If I can establish how my y values are going to change according to a certain relationship, then I should be able to predict future y values. Here's the example. If f is a direct square power function, so that tells me that my y values are directly varying with the square of x. If I know my original point is 5, 1,000, I want to know how to get to 20, y. Well, here I can see that I have changed my x value by a factor of 4. How is it going to change my y values if I have this direct square relationship? Well, let's replace x with 4x. That simplifies to y equals k times 16x. And if I divide by my originally 16x squared, sorry about that. If I divide by my original expression, you'll see that I end up with a change in y of, by a factor of 16. So when I multiply my x values by 4, I should multiply my y values by 16, which means that my new point would be 20, 16,000. Notice that I never had to actually identify what the specific function was. I just needed to know the relationships and the patterns. All right, very quickly, let's see if we can fill out this table and remember the patterns that apply for each of these types of functions. First of all, linear. Can you remember the pattern? I hope you said add, add. Exponential. Add, multiply. Power. Multiply, multiply. And finally, quadratic the constant second difference. Let's see if we can answer these questions. What are the numerical patterns associated with the linear, exponential, power, and quadratic functions? Well, we just saw the chart that we established here. Linear, add, add. Exponential, add, multiply. Power, multiply, multiply. And quadratic, constant second difference. How does doubling or tripling x affect y when y varies directly or inversely with powers of x? Well, that example, we took our original relationship and replaced our x values with the changed value of x and then created a ratio to see how those changes in x affected y. How do numerical patterns help us determine the actual equation for each type of function? Well, first, those numerical patterns help us determine the type of function. Then, the numerical patterns help us establish data points for the function. Once we know the type of function and the data points, we can solve for the specific equation, just as we did in the previous section, using graphical patterns.